begin, uh, let me just introduce you to the project that started our research. Um, this project is the uh, Mindanao uh, Peace and His History and Peace Education Project headed by uh, Father Albert Alejo. And its main output is this um, infographic. It's a timeline of um, various um, historical events which integrates also um, Mindanao's um, culture, Mindanao's um, what do you call this? Uh, environment and economy. So uh, the goal here of this project is to um, uh, promote uh, shared peace and development in Mindanao. So uh, for this presentation, we're going to focus on a small part of this infographic, which is the Mindanao disaster timeline. So this is what uh, Dr. Uh, Lagmay and I have been working on. And as uh, you can see here, uh, the Mindanao disaster timeline is a compilation of um, events, uh, calamitous events that have happened uh, in recorded history. So uh, a few of the events that we have documented are Hibok Hibok eruption, Sendong floods during uh, 2011. This is the Moro Gulf earthquake, 1976. The Apple Fire, forest fire in 2016. Surigao earthquake, uh, Agaton floods, and the typho Typhoon Pablo debris flows. So um, these uh, big and deadly events don't happen every day. They happen in intervals of um, decades and even centuries. So that is the reason why um, it is normally forgotten by the younger generations. But having a record of these uh, events is important, especially because uh, it, it has information. What have we learned from these events? So it has information that is critical to efficient uh, DRR and for the resilience of Mindanao communities. Next, uh, according to the uh, United Nations Office of Disaster Risk Reduction, lower development countries such as ours are at the higher risk from hazards than in developed nations. So uh, for what we have learned uh, from experience, uh, effective disaster mitigation involves um, the government, both national and local, providing um, an accurate, uh, reliable, and timely warnings. And these warnings have to be met by an appropriate response. So that response is the re responsibility of everyone. And we also have noted um, when survivors of Sendong and Pablo are interviewed, these are the things that uh, they say. So never na nangyari sa iligan Ang ganitong klaseng baha. Or, I live near the shore, so I am used to big waves and strong winds. Lahirajud ang bagyo. But this typhoon is different. So, as you can see, people back then are, are surprised, are, are caught unprepared for these kinds of events. So, to anticipate um, this risk, uh, we cannot wholly rely on just um, our knowledge of our past events or what has happened historically. Because some of the disasters that could happen have not yet happened. Yeah. So that is why it is important that we move to use probabilistic hazard maps in risk assessment because in this way it captures uh, these bigger events and also, it takes into account the effects of climate change. So, um, as we are familiar with, GIS has been revolutionizing uh, disaster management here in the Philippines. From uh, planning, DRR planning, to um, response efforts. Also, GIS has um, these capabilities that it could integrate multiple data sets such as topography, uh, geomorphology, and uh, even geomorphology, and uh, even, um, what do you call this? 
uh, population data and demographics, which can be easily um, which can be easily accessible to to the stakeholders. So now, here I'm going to talk about uh, the typhoon Pablo debris flows. So when typh typhoon Pablo hit a uh, Compostela Valley, it brought about torrential rain, and that triggered debris flows in the area. Debris flows are slurries. They're, they're composed of big boulders, mud, and water that rage through uh, the, the barangay and into New Bataan. So in this uh, image, it shows the reconstructed um, debris flow field. The red one is uh, the boulder fields, which is mostly made out of boulders. And the pan or orange one is the sandy fields. Yeah. So uh, as you can see here, the location of Barangay Andap is directly uh, on the path of the debris flows. So uh, in their experience, since New Bataan has just been established in 1968, they have never experienced such a strong typhoon or uh, even um, debris flows like this. So it's the unfamiliarity of the community that caused or compounded the deaths and the damage in the area. Next, a uh, similar thing happened to a town in Lano del Norte, in Tubod. Um, when Typhoon Vinta hit uh, in December, 2017, um, it also caused debris flows in the area. Here, this is a map of uh, debris flow hazards. This is available in uh, the NOAA website. The red part is um, for the places that are, sorry, places that are uh, unsafe from debris flows, while the uncolored parts are the ones that are safe. So this map has been online, and it's been available online uh, since May 2014. It's just unfortunate that it wasn't been used in time to be able to prepare for these types of disasters. Next, uh, for landslides, uh, Project NOAA before has already done a, a mapping of landslides in the Philippines using uh, satellite imagery. So for Mindanao, um, from 2003 to 2014, there are a total of 866 landslide events that are mapped. And as you can see, most of them are clustered in mountainous regions of um, Misamis Occidental, Misamis Oriental, and then here in Compostela Valley and um, Davao Oriental. So these events here are in uh, sitios in uh, Compostela Valley in Pantuhan. So this is for 2011 and 2012. And these uh, events highlight the effect of um, human activities such as large-scale deforestation and um, uncontrolled mining activities that aggravate uh, slope instability in their area. Next, uh, storm surges. So storm surges are uh, the increase in the abnormal increase in water level, and it is due to um, the strong winds of the typhoon pushing the water onto the shore. So here, uh, Project NOAA before in 2013, after the onslaught of the typhoon surges of Yolanda, they have uh, prepared this um, storm surge maps for all coastal provinces in the Philippines and these are modeled after uh, the heights of the storm surge here are modeled after uh, Yolanda wind speed scenarios so basically these these areas are in danger of being inundated uh, of um, by a storm surge if ever a storm as strong as Yolanda would hit them next uh, is the Mount Apple fire uh, this fire uh, got aggravated during the dry season. <laughs> Wrap up, man. So, uh, so 
um, the fire here got um, worse because of the dry season in 2014 and what Project NOAA did was um, conduct a thermal imaging survey. So this, these helped identify areas to help uh, the fire mitigation efforts focus on those areas. Next are earthquakes. Uh, we also have maps of um, earthquake events in Mindanao. This is from 1879 to 2018. So as you can see, they're concentrated in these zones where there are um, subduction zones and fault systems. And, and this event is the Surigao earthquake in 2017. And this is the uh, Moro Gulf earthquake, which caused a tsunami inundating uh, Lebak in Sultan Kudarat. Uh, lastly, what we have um, applications for volcanic activity. So it's a bit small, but uh, the red ones are the active volcanoes, the orange ones are the potentially active volcanoes, and the gray ones are the inactive volcanoes in Mindanao. And um, I'm just showing here the latest um, volcanic eruption that uh, has been experienced in Mindanao, which is the 1951 Hibok Hibok eruption. Okay. So to summarize, uh, disaster risk is an, um, an unresolved problem of development. So planning against these hazards could reduce our vulnerabilities across all sectors. And um, the Mindanao disaster hazard timeline must be complemented with probabli probabilistic risk assessment. So as I've said before, we cannot just rely on our historical records. We need to be uh, prepared or we, we, we need to anticipate bigger event, events and then anticipatory planning approaches make our country more resilient against hazard impacts and at the same time develop our communities accordingly unhampered by calamitous events.